Hello, viewers, and welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is David Miskis. With me now is journalist Fatu Kamara from The Gambia. She's actually here in the U.S. after um, leaving the country and now um, self-imposed exile here in the United States, given the fact that she was linked to allegedly having tarnished the image of the president. And she is here to discuss um, the trials that she went through with the government, um, even in, ending up in prison for 25 days, facing further charges, leaving the country, and now she's here in the United States. And so we're going to be speaking to her with that uh, on that issue, as well as just a larger look at the uh, lack of freedom within the country. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kamara, for being with us here on Sahara TV. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's nice to be on uh, Sahara TV. I appreciate it. Yes, and thank you so much. So I think to start out, if you could just tell us. So I understand back in September, you were in prison for 25 days. And then later when you were brought to court, they alleged this uh, business of being linked to Freedom Newspaper. And in fact, um, releasing some false information that against the president that the government deemed to be false. And the fact that what they charged you with is known um, there as tarnishing the image of the president. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, it was on the 15th of September when I was uh, picked up from my house that I was um, needed for some allegation that was made against me by um, a 24 year old woman. But um, at that time, they did not say anything about tarnishing the image of the president. So when I was picked up uh, the, at night, around uh, 10 o'clock at night, some of the questions that I was asked was um, if I ever said that the president was dating that woman or if I ever said that the president gave her some money, that was what I was asked. And then um, the question about a visit that I made to Senegal, a neighboring country to Gambia, also came up, uh, who I met in Senegal, and if I signed a contract with um, a TV station to work for them over there. That was all that I was asked for until um, when I was released after 25 days, there was no charge because um, the intelligence officers made it clear that they don't have any evidence against me because my passwords were taken, my Facebook password and my email passwords. They were all, um, uh, the, the intelligence officers asked me for them and they could not find anything, you know, sort of me passing information to anybody. And then this day came, the 10th of October, when they told me that I was going home. It was that time that they said, well, we have to stop by the court because this issue, a lot of people are interested in it. You know, Amnesty is writing, the Committee for the Protection of Journalists, CPJ, is also writing about it. So if we just let you go home like that, somebody could tell you, sue the government. So for us to avoid that, we're just going to go to the court, but it's just a procedure. When you go there, just listen, because we didn't find anything. Whatever you have there is something that came from the Attorney General Chambers. We don't know what it is, but just go over there and listen. That was when I was taken to the court. So when I got there, um, the, the, they told me that I need to find a lawyer. I said, I didn't know that I was coming here and I don't have no lawyer. So it was during that time that um, a lawyer was there. So he decided, OK, I can, I'll give me five minutes. Let me ask her what it is and then I can take the case. And while we were there, a chat sheet was read and he talked about uh, punishing the image of the president. I was never asked that question during investigation. So I, 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 until now, I don't know how that came about. Um, so basically, I mean, how do you think the initial charges came? Like, how did this woman just come out of nowhere? I mean, had you had any contact with her? Or is this something common to what goes on in the country that you could be accused by a, or even a stranger or a neighbor? And then the authorities will show up at your house and, and take you away and question you upon. Well, it is something that is becoming very common in Gambia because I don't really know this woman. I've, I met her twice. Uh, the first time she wanted to come on my show, because I have a TV show called The Fatu Show. She wanted to be on my show, so she was calling the um, the marketing manager of the TV and said she wanted to be on my show. So I invited her, and I did not have no contacts with her at all, because that was the job of the producer who met with her, got the questions for me, and it was just only for, uh, she was on the show for like 10 minutes, and that was all. But I think uh, she was being used by uh, people in the government, because um, I I'm sure they have been planning this for a while. You know how it is like in Gambia, people fighting each other in positions. I think she was used to, to start it. And then the information got to the president that this was what I was doing. But the president ordered for my arrest. Wow. And then in order to, like you say, maybe they were thinking of saving face or something like that, where you were saying 
earlier that Amnesty and now the CPJ were writing, and so not for you to go home and get these supposedly get these ideas of suing the government. They dropped you off at the court and trumped up these charges linking yeah. you to Freedom Newspaper and tarnishing the image of the president, what they say. Yeah, to kind, of, to kind of come up with something, because we never, at the investigation, we never talked about tarnishing the image of the president. And they, again, they said in September, forgetting that um, in September they were um, with, I was with them from the 15th of September to the 10th of October. And again, it was in September that they had my password. And a friend of mine who traveled with me to Senegal told me that the Deputy Director General at the National Intelligence Office said to her that they can give her my password for her to go into my email and plant something there and print it out so they can have evidence. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I understand the charge that you were facing under new internet laws carried a maximum sentence of 15 years. Now, um, based on your time being in the Gambia until up and you left and, and with President Jame being in power since 1994, do you believe things have gotten worse? over the time since he's been in power? Of course, yes, because mm. um, I was not, I was very young when the First Republic was there. That was, I think, uh, that ended in 1994. That was when I finished high school. So Jame is the, the president that we know, but definitely he's been um, very, very tough. Like, um, there's no freedom of speech. People cannot say anything. Most of the time, even when you talk on the phone and you said something, you are arrested. So wow. it's, um, and you cannot say anything negative about him. So that's why even our talk shows, like the show that I was running, every issue that I have to talk about has to do with social issues, like uh, marriages, divorce, and stuff like that. If you have to say anything about him in the media, it has to be positive. Even on the phone, when people are around, you cannot say anything negative about him. And even in some instances, if people have new jobs, they have to write to him and say, Your Excellency, we're asking for your blessing. So I think that's the new Gambia that we have now. Wow. Yeah. So... Um... Have you ever, prior to this incident, had you ever run into any other issues with the authorities like this? Um, no. I, I, I was his press officer the first, uh, sorry, I was his press secretary for mm -hmm. the first time in 2011, and I was removed from the job. But um, that time there was an issue, something happened, and it had to do with um, Dr. Amadou Jane, who was jailed for printing T-shirts. So mm -hmm. they had, uh, according to what I, what the information that I had, they thought I had links with him because I worked for the U.S. Embassy for three and a half years, and Amr Jane worked for the U.S. Embassy before. Okay. So they thought I had links with him, and I was removed from my job, but I was never arrested. Okay. Um, I guess then uh, one question I'd like to follow up is based on what you've seen going on in the country. Did you ever expect anything like this to happen? I mean, to, for it to scale up like this to the point where you felt safer actually leaving the country than waiting to face this more this larger charge of of, of uh, tarnishing the image of the president well i think this is something that nobody accept um you know expected especially um the relationship that i have with the president mm -hmm. like i've been working with him for a long time even not only as the uh, press secretary to him but also i was at the tv the national tv for over 15 years reading the news wow. and at some point i started my own show so we have a very good relationship he even calls me his daughter so that is why a lot of people are shocked and now that this happened to me people are scared that it could happen to anybody so this was definitely never uh, never expected that this man can you know put me in jail for 25 days without no charge and um, right. each time i ask the director at the intelligence services when can i go home he'll be like, we are waiting on the president. We, we told him that you are here, but he's not giving any um, clearance that you should go home. Um, I know you made a statement recently that you would not uh, return home while President Jame is in power. Um, what do you think would happen? I mean, is it more for your safety or you just don't want to be under that system or a bit of both at this point? Well, it's for my safety, because mm -hmm. since I, I left the Gambia, I've been speaking out. I spoke with BBC, okay. and Franz Van Kat interviewed me yesterday, and here I am talking to you. So he knows all these things. Right. And knowing the kind of person President Jame is, he's very sensitive. He doesn't mm -hmm. want anything about him out there. So, of course, if I get back to Gambia, that would be dangerous for me, because, of course, I'll be arrested upon arrival. Mm -hmm. And anything that's going to happen, I don't know, because um, journalists disappeared in that country. A journalist has been killed. Wow. So anything could happen. That's actually uh, 
thanks for, for leading that uh, this way. Um, my next question was about the journalists in the country. You said uh, a number of them have disappeared and even been killed. Do you know about how many journalists might be in jail at any time or um, under? Oh. I know. I know. Right now, there's a journalist that is in um, the prisons right now because they said he was um, he works for a newspaper okay. that is owned by the president. So um, it is believed that this guy was writing papers for people to file asylums, and he was arrested and he is still uh, in prison. He is refused bail. They don't want to bail him. He's denied bail. But uh, he goes to court from the from from the prison, and the one that w disappeared until now, nobody have any word on him. And there is another one that was killed, but until now, the government is denying that they have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I I don't want to be one of those missing people, you know. Right. <laughs> my, of course. My kids are too young. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. So given, like, I mean, even the attacks on press freedom, or the like, you even mentioned there is no uh, press freedom or freedom of speech. Is there any type of even a nascent movement of opposition, even at a small grassroots level or some on social media or anything like that existing within the country right now? No, you cannot do that while you are in Gambia, because mm -hmm. if you do it, you risk being arrested. You know, of course, you'll be picked up and anything could happen to you. So the people that are in Gambia did not do that. But I remember when I worked as his press secretary the first time, I was the first press secretary to, uh, to arrange a meeting for the president to meet with the journalists of the Gambia, and that went very well. But actually, the, the, the meeting took place, but it didn't end well because he didn't. He wanted to, you know, be the only one talking to the journalists. And kind of during the meeting, he said, "I'm not going to let anybody say bad things about me. If you do that, you know, you will see what I will do." And apart from that, um, there was a newspaper that he closed, and I also spoke to him about op opening that newspaper, and he did. So I, I tried my best trying to talk mm -hmm. to him about, you know, the, journal, the fact that the journalists are not his enemies and that it is easy to, to, to work with journalists if you understand each other. But he's always been saying that he's not going to appease any journalist and, mm -hmm. you know, that is not the reason why he's there. So the people that are outside of the Gambia, Gambians, are now trying by putting stuff online, but the ones that are in there cannot do that. There's no way they can say anything because they, they will be arrested. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know, um, recently there were a couple of, well, most recently uh, the UN envoy to Eritrea uh, made a rather shocking statement when he said that the citizens risk being shot by their own soldiers if they attempt to flee the country. Um, I was wondering if there's anything, maybe not to that extreme, but can people freely leave the country in any capacity? Or, I mean, like yourself, obviously you left um, you know, through Senegal, and now you're here and, and, and pretty much under self-imposed exile, like you stated. But is there any freedom of movement like that for citizens within the country? Well, of course, they didn't know I was leaving, and right. my life was in danger. That, is, that was why I had to leave, because um, if they knew I was leaving, they were going to catch me, of course, and also take me to the TV, because that's what they do in Gambia now. Any little crime, they have to take you to the television for you to confess and say sorry to the president that you're sorry that this is, the, this is the reason why you did this. And uh, recently, a young boy, uh, a 20-year-old, was trying to leave the country to go to, go to Senegal and from there go somewhere and seek asylum. And he was arrested. And that case is still on. So definitely people don't have um, free movements. And recently, the interior minister of the Gambia was in Senegal to talk to Macky Sall that, um, you know, Gambia, they should not be allowing Gambian dissidents to live in Senegal or people to be crossing the border and coming to live in Senegal. They've made that an issue. But um, on that, my take was the president should ask Macky Sall why his people are not leaving Senegal and coming to Gambia. Mm -hmm. Because if a state, if, if it goes to a point where the state is fighting with its own people, then that is a serious problem. And that is what is happening in Gambia. I would have loved to stay in my country. Mm -hmm. I have a big talk show there and, uh, you know, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm comfortable there. But if your life is at risk, the best thing is to leave, especially in a country where people just people can get people can be disappeared, you know, just like that. Uh, so my last question: um, What are your plans now and uh, going forward? Are you working on anything new? Or are you trying to, um, you know, maybe continue your journalistic work here in the U.S. or what's next? Well, I would love to continue journalism work here in the U.S. because this is what I know. I went to school for media and communication, and I've been doing journalism for the past 15, 16 years um, because I started at a very young age. So that's what I will continue to do. But it all depends. You know, I have to be settled here first and have my work permit and everything. But meanwhile, I might set up um, uh, an online TV or an online radio station and be communicating to the people in Gambia. 
because I have a huge fan base. And if you go through my Facebook, um, they, a lot of people listen to me. So I'm trying to be here and, you know, talk to the Gambian people and say, we have to do something about this because it, it's a big problem and we cannot be living like this. This is the 21st century. I mean, this man has everything that he needs. I mean, he, he's into every kind of business in Gambia. Mm. If people let him do all of that, he should at least give us our peace and freedom. Great, and thank you so much again for being with us here on Sahara TV. Viewers, well, that was Fatou Kamara, an exile journalist from The Gambia. She was here with, uh, here with us to share her tale of leaving the country and um, after being in prison for 25 days and facing a much larger charge of tarnishing the image of the president. She also shared with us some insight into the lack of uh, press freedom and freedom of speech within the Gambia. Thank you, viewers, and stay tuned for more to come.